We are all still reeling from an explosive return to F1 action this weekend just gone and it's already race week. F1 heads to the Temple of Speed this weekend as we bring you the Italian Grand Prix preview. Welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. This is episode 322. And if you'd like to see or hear more from us in your social feed, why not give us a follow at Grid Talk UK everywhere you can find the at symbol. I'm your host, Tom Horrocks, and today I am joined by Grid Talk host O.A. Medford. Hello, that was a really bad time to take a cup of tea. <laughs> Definitely was, yes. Monkey Seat po- podcast host, Carl King. Well, this is weird. <laughs> and uh, and Soft Art podcast, Jonah Gould. Hello. And now uh, we're just going to have a quick word from our sponsor for today, which, uh, as usual, is betonline.ag. Uh, betonline.ag is your number one source for all basketball info, stats, news and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season as they have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, hockey, right up to UFC and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favourite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to betonline.ag today. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. And I confess to still not have any idea what MLB is, so I apologise for that. No idea. That would be um, Major League Baseball. Fantastic. I know I know Major League Baseball. That's great. Fantastic. I, now I know. I've read that so many times now, and I actually now know what it means. Fantastic. I, I knew the... Uh, the uh, <laughs> the North American amongst us would know who that is. So thank you for that. Joe. Yes, yes. The Jays are about three, five minutes south. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So we we're, we're previewing the the uh, the Italian Grand Prix at Monza, the the only race this year that's going to be in Italy due to the uh, cancelled Imola Grand Prix. But we were supposed to have a tire compound change for qualifying at Imola, which then got delayed to Spa because of the cancellation. So I'm going to come to you, Owen, to talk about that that uh, that tire change rule. Obviously, we trialed it in Spa. Um, it's here in Italy, hard for Q1, mediums for Q2 and soft for Q3. Do you like it? And should it stay? Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I think it... Uh, off, the t- like, off the top of my head, like just I, I sort of don't like that we're sort of telling the teams what to do. Um, but from a sort of competitiveness point of view and, uh, and, and having something interesting to watch, um, every time we do that, uh, we get something more interesting out of it. So um, I think it's probably a net positive. And, um, and you know, I think it sort of also helps. It, it sort of really shows to um, differentiate between the three sessions. And, you know, and we do, and we do get a significantly faster Q3 time um, than we do in, uh, in Q2 uh, and, and Q1. Um, I think it's sort of difficult to say, because I remember it, I think it was rain affected when we had it in Spa. Um, so all we got was, I believe, the soft runners uh, in, in Q3. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, actually. Um, but I'm intrigued just by that. Uh, I'm, in- I'm intrigued by the idea that it could be, um, you know, just difficult for the teams. Yeah, obviously we had one medium runner in Q2, which was Stroll going into the barriers uh, <laughs> and on the slightly wet circuit. So, uh, but this, but but it wasn't wet. You know, the session wasn't declared wet, so it was fine for it was fine for mediums. So, Jonah, your thoughts on on the tires uh, for or the change of qualifying? How will it affect it this week? Obviously, as Owen said, we haven't actually seen it properly in action yet. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll affect it in obviously in terms of strategy. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't love it. Um, I don't love it because it's taking away a part of the strategic element, um, which, I mean, makes the sport unique, right? But uh, I think it'll it'll have a pretty good effect as as the as the tires ramp up in terms of compound, uh, as well as the track ramps up. I mean, we know the track gets greener and faster throughout qualifying, and so are the tires. Uh, so I think it's going to be pretty interesting to watch, you know, how the teams handle that. And like Owen said, how uh, how significantly faster the Q3 time is going to be compared to Q2. But I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan. and I don't I don't love it. OK, that seems like it's one for one against. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence as well myself. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with that. But we'll move on to the teams now then, Carl. So I'm going to come to you first for lucky you, Alfa Tori. We've got a choice of four drivers for Alfa Tori. It looks like this weekend we're going to have Lawson and Sonoda at this point, at the time of recording anyway. So uh, um, so they've had one, po- they had one point in Belgium and that's their only score since round four. Is there really any hope for Alfa Tori for this race in specific for this this race specifically? I beg your pardon. Uh, no, 
Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be, yeah, I'm not going to be about the bitch on that one. Um, I mean, there's no, like, there's nothing exciting about Avatari, um, full stop in this one. It'd be good to see Lawson do something. Um, and, and he did well last week, um, last weekend. Uh, so, and Snow does, bless him. I think his times, his days are numbered as well. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, so, yeah, I think it'd be good to see what happens. Um, obviously, Rick in that chair would have been interesting. Um, but I, I was just looking back at last year's, and ironically, Nick DeVries ran in this because it was appendix skate. <laughs> um, so um, it's sort of a bit of a full circle of irony um, that Nick DeVries isn't racing in this one. Um, and it will be, I, I'm so confused as to how many drivers they've got and who's coming in and out. But I think it will be Lawson. Uh, Lawson will do all right, probably 15th, 16th, no, do, no better. And uh, the writing's definitely on the wall if Lawson beats him. Yeah, no, I, I know there's been a bit of a um, a thing made about Lawson finishing P13 and ahead of Sonoda, but I think you've got to remember that uh, that Sonoda had a, a time as well. So, Sonoda had a time yeah. penalty, and there was only seven laps run at that point. And I know Lawson got a penalty earlier on, but that was served by the time it got to the restart. So I think you've got to temper the expectation there. At no point in the race was he ahead of Sonoda on track. It was only because the penalty that put him behind, but not taking away from a great performance from Lawson. So a fantastic debut. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in a in an in another race and uh, it would have been quite ironic to see Nick DeVries back in this race given that today it's his only point score in Formula 1 and will probably will be his only point score in Formula 1 but moving on to Alfa Romeo then Owen so you 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 lucky person you you get Alfa Romeo just the nine points on the board they they haven't scored since the Canadian Grand Prix and uh, doesn't even look like they've been close is this just a fight between the two Alfa teams for worst team in F1 this year do you think or is can they bring other teams into the fight uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't see them kind of, they, they've been 12th or 13th of the last couple of races. That's about it. And and I, I think if they were going to score points, it would have been, uh, last weekend in the, it, it, <laughs> at Zandvoort. Um, and I don't really see them. I don't kind of see them going forwards at, at Monza. It's the sort of thing where I just, I, you know, traditionally with the Ferrari power, you'd expect them to, to at least have the straight line speed, but they don't even really seem to have that. Um, I don't, you know, Grand, Grand Joe's probably, you know, he's got one. He's got one job, which is don't stick it in the wall. And I'm sorry, but Valtteri Bottas is completely uninspiring. Um, I just, I, I don't see, I, I don't see any points in their future. Um, you know, that they, they, they might steal a couple, but I don't. You know, they, they, their entire job is 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 trying. You know, getting ahead of the Williams. Really, they're, they're, they're close enough, but I think it's going to need, you know, Williams to. Both fall off the road and then have a and have uh, have an absolute Brahma of a weekend for it to for them to get close to that. So you hear, heard it here first. Mystic Medford doesn't see points in the future for uh, for the Alfa Romeo team. So move on, moving on to the Haas team then. So eleven points for for Haas so far. Um, no points since Miami Jonah and um, and the best result of P twelve in that time as well. That even that looks like a like a bit of an anomaly. So. They're occasional speeder. They can score quite. They can get quite high up in qualifying. Can you see them scraping a point at any point, or are they very much in the same brand as the Alphas? Well, I mean, I was going to bring up as well the qualifying part. I mean, we've seen Hulkenberg sticking in Q three a fair amount of times for a, for a car that doesn't look like it really belongs there. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love Gunther and I love everything they're doing, but that car is is really taking a step back. I think from you know the promise they showed at the beginning of last year, and ever since then, it's just been a downhill spiral. I think, yeah, I mean, they could score a point if it all goes right. I mean, we've seen Monza can bring some pretty good racing and some pretty fortunate uh, positions. I mean, even think about it, Nick DeVries making points and then showing how god-awful he was this year. Uh, I'm sure we can see the potential, but everything's got to go right for the Haas boys for one of them to stick it in the points. I don't see it likely. Maybe one of them can make it in a Q3. We've seen flashes of brilliance in qualifying from, from Hulkenberg and a little bit from Magnussen, but... Uh, I don't see points as a realistic option, but if it all goes right, you never know. I think it's possible. 
Yeah, it's uh, it seems to be a bit of a Frankenstein car as, as well. Just just falls backwards in the race, and it's just quite upsetting to watch. Sometimes you know, you finally get that hope up for a good performance from Haas, and and they just just fall away. But uh, but the team that has definitely done the opposite of that in recent races, Carl, is the Williams team, and fifteen points, more points this weekend from Albon, and they're heading to the race that everyone says they're going to be competitive at. If they could do what they did at Zandvoort, what are they going to do this weekend in a in a track where they're supposed to be a lot more competitive? I mean, last year they came in at ninth and fifteenth, and that was two with two god awful drivers. Um, so, I mean, there is a chance the sergeant's going to whack it into a wall. Let's be honest; um, he seems to be on a crash derby at the moment. Um, whether that's fault of his own or not, I'm not quite sure. I mean, Albert, like. Where's this talent come from? <laughs> He's only got a load of talent. Um, maybe it's almost the anti-cursed chair of that um, initial Williams, you know, the first Williams chair um, that was once held by that person I hate and now held by um, our lovely man, um, Albon. I think it's going to be, I think, I, I, I think they're both going to end up in the points. Um, I hope they do. Uh, you're guaranteed with one of them in the points. Uh, I, I think Albon's going to be there. It is a nice track for them. Um, uh, it's just going to be, yeah, Williams is so much better this year. It's their track. It's their race to lose. And I can't imagine them not doing well there. Yeah, and I would say probably the, the gap to Alpine is probably a bit unassailable, but you never know. Could we even see a Williams podium this weekend? It's a, that's It's been a long time since we thought that could happen. But, Keep uh, dreaming, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I mean, if, if Albon could qualify and, and race comfortably in P6 in, in the race, then, you know, why not? Who knows? It's mm-hmm. crazier things have happened this year. We're seeing a McLaren up front now, whereas we were seeing at the back at the start of the season. So, but moving on to Alpine Nano A, normally I apologize to whoever gets Alpine, but, uh, but a really good display at the weekend. And is this a case of the, the big shakeup actually doing something, or is it just a lottery of the conditions that we saw at the weekend? Um, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I'll put it this way. I'm trying to make a part out of shake up, but I, I, you know, I think they've just, they happen to have landed, you know, they've, basically they've been, you know, but they've been put through the spin dryer and, uh, you know, had a washing machine of conditions at, uh, at Zanvoort and they, you know, they've landed sort of, uh, you know, sort of stuck the landing with Gasly. Um, you know, they've been swimming around the bottom of the points, which is where Rockon ended up. And I think I, I don't think in a well, I don't think in a more normal race that we're going to get uh, Alpine, oh, sorry, Alpine doing anything particularly spectacular, um, or or a sailing, uh, you know, sort of outscoring McLaren. Um, but they have shown a lot more promising form um, more recently, so that you know, in actually getting points, which is um, significantly better than double DNFs and. You know, massive operational issues. So um, maybe they've you know thought long and hard and really done something. You know, really sort of you know cleared the air back at the factory, and uh, and that's what we're seeing. Um, I, you know, long may it for their long may long may it continue. Sorry for for Alpine's sake, but um, I, I I remain yet to be convinced over whether this is a, a new uptick in form. It could just be the old uh, stop clock adage as well with with both drivers now with with a podium each and. Uh... And yeah, obviously the weekend just gone their best their best results since uh, since Monaco. So um, it's it's definitely a, it's it's exactly what they needed a sixteen point haul for the weekend. But uh, but yeah, long way to go to, uh, to to catch McLaren, the team they've really been quicker than for most of the season. But we're moving on to McLaren now, Jonah, and and you're a big McLaren fan yourself, I hear. So uh, they show some great pace in Zandvoort, but if things have gone slightly different, I think we could have seen Norris on the podium. Um, but what is the rest of their season for? What is this weekend about? Are, are they going to be just going for box office results or, or can they actually take the fight to Aston Martin and Ferrari and Mercedes ahead? Yeah, I mean, I think they can. Uh, they think they can take the fight to all three of those teams. And, and I'm going to try and use as, as non-biased of an opinion as possible. I think they're better than every single one of them in terms of raw pace. Uh, not necessarily strategy, as we saw in uh, in Zandvoort, not pitting Lando, um, which seems to be a recurring theme when it gets wet. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I think they're faster in terms of actual raw pace. Uh, Ferrari's quick in a straight line, but it doesn't look like their their car's super, super competitive. We know Monza, I mean, they did well in 2019 with what may or may not be a legal car. Um, but we're, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Honestly, I think that McLaren is the fastest out of that bunch. You can't really compete with a Fernando Alonso on a good day. I mean, that guy is an absolute monster. 
but that car is quick and it's very, very quick. It's showing flashes of brilliance. I mean, Lando top few in qualifying basically every race since uh, the upgrades were put on in, in Austria and Silverstone. So I think that that McLaren can go really, really high. And I think we can, we can look at a podium and I mean, you know, God willing, Max makes a mistake. Look at potentially taking a win. That's just my, my, you know, biased McLaren side is like, yeah, they can do it. They did it two years ago. Like something can happen. Um, Oscar's showing that, that, you know, age is just a number. That guy's unreal uh, in his rookie season with a car that's finally competitive. So I think a podium is on the cards for one, if not both the McLarens. Uh, we all hope so, because the only team who got a 1-2 in 2021 could be the only team besides Red Bull to get a win this weekend. So not maybe not this weekend, but could well be. But certainly this season, that will be the hope for all as uh, closet and out there McLaren fans. But uh, we're moving on then to to Ferrari, Carl, and uh, 201 points, fifth place. They, they're slightly closer to Mercedes after their um, slightly uh, after Sainz staying ahead of um, Hamilton uh, in the last race, just a couple of point gain there. Um, can the Tifosi and Monza actually hope for a big result, given that they're coming home to uh, to their to effectively their home Grand Prix? Talking about fans in the closet, I think Ferrari are going to want to be retracting back into that closet quite quickly. Um, it's definitely going backwards at the moment. Um, I mean, it's it signs just seems to be having it over. Leclerc at the moment. I don't know. He found a new track seemingly um, in last week's race. Um, but I think that the Ferrari are very, they're very strong, but they're also very disorganized. And I think that's their problem is they just can't keep it on track. They can't keep the team together. They're fight, infighting on the radio between drivers and, you know, teams. And the, the teams don't have, the team doesn't have an idea. They will have a lot of pressure put on them. And I don't think Ferrari survive under pressure. Um, they're going to be more of a nut that cracks than a diamond that polishes um, more than anything. Yes, yeah, a fair point. I mean, they've, they've shown a lot of pace, but uh, they've just not seemed to put it together when it when it counts. And uh, a great opportunity this weekend. And Leclerc was, was all over the place, literally hardly on the track. Um, science has now moved back ahead of him in the championship they've just been flip-flopping all season so it has definitely been a case of non-optimization there I think if Leclerc optimizes his races he's well clear of science um, but science has just done the business and, and he is still there so so fair play to him but moving on to, to Aston Martin then a, a surprise uh, P2 and a fastest lap not really expected at the start of uh, a start of the weekend from Fernando Alonso um, returning to a place that he does love in in Monza can they push with more momentum this weekend Owain or uh, or is this going to be uh, another kind of um, kind of smash and grab or, you know can they actually be up there fighting um, I think uh, I had a look back at the uh, at the qualifying times for uh, for for um... Belgium because I just thought it was a uh, for Q3 at least just because I thought it was a bit be an interesting comparison it was a relatively similar circuit um and I, I kind of don't think that Aston Martin I think this is a, that was a bit lucky um and if you look at their sort of results from from that uh from that weekend it wasn't exactly great um I don't, I don't think they've got the car speed to do it um Fernando Alonso is Fernando Alonso so let's be honest he'll probably end up in the top five no matter what happens um you know I think that's I think that's they're going to be the strongest part of their weekend um but unfortunately i think stroll is sort of dragging them down and obviously the car is it has been going backwards for quite a while um you know i think if they've got any sense they won't be working on it very much more um so you know i think anything that they've got in the pipeline is it's just going to be sort of be exacerbated i, th I think that, that any gaps from them to the front um is just going to get larger i don't i they 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 need sort of a crazy race, um, which we do get at Monza relatively often. So, um, you know, fingers crossed. There's still hope for that. But apart from that, it, I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's um, one of those things where they can be counting on it. Uh, we'll probably get the oblig the obligatory downpour that seems to be happening at every race at some point in the weekend. That you know, every race since Baku, I think it's it's rained in some capacity. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a. Uh... 
yeah, it's diff- difficult to say which Aston Martin are going to turn up, but uh, but it's it's going to be interesting either way. But uh, but Mercedes up next for you, Jonah, and and the pace was there this weekend. It did look like a bad qualifying from Hamilton put him out of out of contention, but Russell was right there, and uh, and the pace was definitely there in the race, but just things didn't quite fall right back. You know, some bad strategy errors and and everything. But moving ahead to this weekend, can they can they take? you know, some, some, some hope from that result and are they going to be competitive? Yeah. You know, I think they can take hope from that result. I mean, we've seen from, from Toto that anything less than winning is a disappointment and that team is not going to take, you know, a slow car and, and and underwhelming performances lightly. Uh, They're going to do everything in their power to get there. And we can see, you know, the improvements they've been making to that car uh, over the course of the season. But honestly, I think that it's still, I'll be honest. I think it's still a little bit underwhelming uh, of a car. And I think that that, Qualifying in Zandvoort, I think, was more of George's prowess behind the wheel than it is the car showing showing pace. Um, but I think they can take some hope. I mean, Monza's a, a track where, you know, straight line speed is really important. The Mercedes engine doesn't look as good as it's used to, I'll be honest. But uh, I think that they can they can show some promise. Definitely double points for those guys um, is on the cards. And, you know, that that car and that team is is really showing some some forward movements, but not uh, not the shades of what they used to be. And I think that uh, in Monza, it'll be a real test of how that car is and how those drivers are behind the wheel of it. Yeah, frustration for George Russell. This was, the, you know, the weekend that he was gonna supposed to be you know, taking the fight back to Hamilton, second half of the season, fresh re- reset. But uh, uh, it all went wrong for in so many ways, and uh, uh, but the pace definitely was there. But Carl, um, I've, you've got Red Bull. My only notes are they're going to win, aren't they? No, one of them is. <laughs> Let's be honest, the other one's going to be crashing or sliding around the back somewhere. <laughs> Let's be honest. I, I will admit. Or, getting, the... or looking over his shoulder at who's going to take his job. Is it Danny Rick? Is it Lawson? Yeah. When um, Perez, I will admit when Perez was, was 15 seconds in the lead on lap three or whatever it was when Verstappen came out the pits, I was looking at that sombrero and the Amazon basket thinking, should I buy it? Should I buy it? And uh, yeah. and then as soon as Verstappen set that first sector time of like two seconds quicker than Perez, I'm like, nope, delete. No, you're, you're grand. Um, yeah, it was never going to happen, Tom. I don't know why you even thought about it. You know, as soon as Verstappen put the pedal down, it was always going to happen. It's always going to happen. It is it boring now that Verstappen's winning every race? Possibly, but actually, because there's so much action happening midfield, you know, and with the Albans and everyone else, and even Perez getting stuck in there, it actually doesn't make much difference that Verstappen's winning everything. And now I sort of want him to win everyone, everything, just to get that stat out of the way um, of someone winning every single race. Yes, I mean obviously he hasn't won every race. Paris has won a couple, but but Red Bull, oh, no sorry. team, Red no Bull. team has ever done the uh, the clean sweep. And I mean he could potentially win what nineteen races in a row or something, or eighteen mm-hmm. races in a row, which is just phenomenal. I think it's at that point now where people almost kind of want to witness history now. Like the thought of Red Bull winning every race on race three, four was just you know terrible to think of. But uh, but now I think it's actually getting to the point where people may want it to happen because people like to see records broken, don't they? At the end of the day, and uh, so it'd be. Interesting interesting to see if that run can continue and break that record outright for 10 straight races so we're going to move on to our predictions there now i think they're probably going to be fairly boring or they may well not be who knows so owen first i'm going to come to you your pole position prediction your podium and then give us a, a bold prediction as well for the race i mean unless it you know unless the red bull blows up <laughs> on, on on the quali lap, it, uh, it, well, I say this happens Red Bull specifically. Uh, this happens going to take pole. He's going to take the win. Um, you know, I think I think actually, to be honest with you, if uh, if even if. Um, even if Perez was leading for whatever reason and Verstappen couldn't get past, you know, they'd probably tell him to move over if only because they, they the Red Bull will be wanting to exceed their own record of getting, um, you know, 10 consecutive Grand Prix wins in a single season, which is, you know, that's, uh, I, I think they've shown time and time again, they want to show that they want to smash records, not just break them. Um, and I think the second, I don't, uh, uh, to be honest, from that, the second place is, uh, is difficult to say. Um, so I'm going to go with, you know, I'm going to go with Sainz. I reckon he's the better of the two Ferraris, but I think they'll somehow mess that up. Um, and then Hamilton third, I think. Okay, uh, have, bold, you got, have you got a bold prediction in there? I mean, the bold prediction is that, uh, I don't, you know what, I'm going to go with Williams for the win. 
Whoa, Williams for the win. Love it. We'd all love to see that. We'd all love to see that. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Jonah, then your your predictions then, a pole position, podium and a bowl prediction. Uh, well, uh, like Owen said, I'm not going to I'm not going to disagree with him there unless Max just happens. Red Bull blows up. That's an easy pull for him. Um, I mean, it's just not even competitive at that point. The guy's on another level uh, in terms of podium. He's going to win. Also, uh, I'm going to I'm going to pull out my McLaren card. I'm going to pull my bias card and say two, three Lando Oscar. Um, we're going to see Oscar's first podium. I'm I'm hoping for it. He's shown flashes and the McLaren's quick. So I'm going to say two, three. Uh, and then a bold prediction. Uh, I'm going to go with Alex Albon sticks at second second place, first row of the grid in quali. Oh, some some uh, some really bold predictions coming here. I thought I was going to uh, surprise people with my prediction, but obviously <laughs> not. So, uh, Carl, your your predictions then? Uh, quali uh, is going to be Nando. Um, like th- to be fair, yes, Verstappen wax it in, but you never know. Um, Verstappen win, boring, boring. And uh, my bold prediction is actually Albon hitting a podium. Fantastic. So a very Williams uh, themed bold prediction area here. So I'm going to go for, um, I'm, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm going to go for a Charlotte Claire poll uh, just because uh, Charlotte Claire uh, just is mega at qualifying i think ferrari is a fast car they just can't seem to make it work and it does seem that leclerc is the guy that uh that will get those pole positions he had one this year already had two this year already i think actually so I, i'm going to go with a charles leclerc pole, uh, pole position but you'll notice my podium does not include charles leclerc so it's going to be max verstappen lando norris and carlos Sainz is going to take the spores for ferrari as a podium my bold prediction may as well make it a williams one as well to complete the lot and i'm going to say logan Sargent gets a p6 or higher just take it away from alex alvin so that's my that's my bold prediction there so uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast i know i've certainly enjoyed hearing those predictions we would love it if you would leave us a five-star rating on Spotify or a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, any five-star reviews we do read out on the podcast and uh, give you a shout out as well. If you're one of those listeners who have not subscribed to the channel, then why not do so? If you subscribe on, on YouTube now, you'll never miss a show again and click the bell to make sure you know when we're live. Well over 2,000 subscribers on there now and we'd love to get more of you involved. So please consider sharing us with a friend so that uh, they, they can see what we do and we can continue to grow. And don't forget us on the socials as well at Grid Talk UK. So, Owen, is there anything that you want to plug in the way of uh, in in the way of um, social stuff or or podcasting or anything? Um, I won't plug for socials. You don't want to see those. Uh, but I will plug uh, <laughs> if you want, if you want to get the lowdown on uh, on the most on the last weekend. Um feeder series uh i'm sure, sure that formula talk will be uh happy to oblige uh, that's hosted by our co-host for sophia richmond and it's available wherever you get uh the grid talk podcast absolutely yeah great show that as well jonah would you like to uh, plug anything you're part of the soft tire podcast uh yeah sure if you want to go listen to the soft tire podcast you can find that on spotify apple Podcasts, wherever you find grid talk aside from youtube um unless you'll see one episode there with everyone will uh, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at Joner F1 underscore. That is J-O-N-E-R-F1 underscore. Fantastic. And Carl, I hear you're part of the monkey seat. and You've got a very handsome co-host I hear. <laughs> He's a bit of a... Anyway, I can't swear on this one, but we can no. on monkey seat. <laughs> uh, we swear a lot and we have lots of silly fun. Um, we're, as we call ourselves, we're Grid Talk's Dirty Cousin. Um, and we literally... <laughs> have lots of fun uh talk about races we're pretty unpredictable even when we're podcasting um which we still have also worked out this week anyway uh, uh yeah and uh we are on i'm sure tom will tell us all the socials because i literally can't remember them just monkey seat pod on all the socials yeah. come on carl bring go. it there we go <laughs> All right, so as I've, as I've said before, all our race shows do go out live on YouTube straight after the event. This one, obviously, being a preview, is is going to air sort of midweek time. So um, you, if you come onto the uh, the live streams, you can ask us questions and we'll answer them in the post show as well. Uh, the audio versions of all the podcasts do go out slightly later on Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal and Pocket Cast. We do also run a Patreon as well. So if you want to can contribute to us monetarily then please do that helps us continue what we're doing and everything does go back into the show we will be back on saturday to bring you our italian grand prix qualifying review so we can't wait to see you then goodbye <laughs>